Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode of my Jade Engine devlog. I'm calling this the next episode of my engine devlog even though this is kind of a mixture of the engine and the next series that we're going to be doing. Currently I'm coding this stuff in Java but I am going to be porting all of these systems to C++ once we finally get to doing our C++ version of the engine. So as you can see I have this simple setup right now. This is sort of the stuff I've done. Um, I implemented this window manager uh, basically where you can create windows. It uh, creates the scroll bar and intelligently, sort of, I say intelligently, it places all the items and everything dynamically. So if I move it around, the items adjust. It just uses a simple flow layout, I guess you could call it. So the sprite sheet actually has some invisible sprites in this area. It basically just places the sprites according to each area. And I also have this prefabs, which basically you can import these game objects, which have animation systems and lots of other stuff attached to them. And then you can, of course, place in some other blocks and then you can select items. I think you can do multi-select and you can delete them and stuff right now. And then you can also open up level files, which is something we didn't really get to in uh, the Geometry Dash series. So you can open up a new file and then you can make some changes and then you can hit control S and save that. And then you can go and open up the other level, go back and forth and it all works just like you would expect it to. So I'm really proud of the way this is coming, except the problem that I ran into uh, is every time I start this up, it sounds like my computer's gonna die. Like It's really heavy on my computer. And if I open up the task manager, this is it running and it's taking up 21% of my CPU, which is just outrageous. Uh, it's pretty good on memory usage, but it's also taking up 8% of my GPU. So this is definitely a flaw in the Java Alt library, which is the library I'm using. It's doing all the drawing CPU based. And I don't even get why the GPU is getting taxed so hard too, because if it's running the GPU too, why the heck is it? It just doesn't make sense. So I've been aiming to fix this. And in order to do that, I need to enable hardware acceleration, which is just a fancy term for drawing everything on the GPU myself. So I switched to using LWJGL3, lightweight Java game library, something like that, which basically just means that I can interface OpenGL, which is basically just a 3D graphics library. And so it means that we are now drawing all this stuff ourselves, which is why, as you can see, it's quite empty compared to the other thing, because I haven't gotten around to finishing everything yet. Uh, you can see that I've got sort of the tab system almost working properly. You can also resize the window. You can move the windows around and everything too, which is good, but there's no text as you can see. That's because drawing text is actually pretty hard. And as part of this new sort of version of the devlog series I'm gonna be doing, I'm sort of gonna be giving you updates periodically. And I was just about to implement the text and I'm gonna try that in just a minute and sort of explain how that goes. But before I do that, I wanna explain sort of how all this uh, processing is working, what I'm doing to draw all these things because it's actually a really complicated process where in the old version we would basically just say draw rectangles everywhere and which is exactly what i did i just draw these rectangles everywhere and figure out where to place them accordingly this new version since i'm worrying about the gpu i have to set up a whole batch render and everything to make sure this is all running efficiently and stuff and and also just so you can see for reference now with this hardware acceleration you can see I'm using up less than 2%. Uh, it goes down after a little bit too. Only 127 megs, which is about half, and only 3.5% of my GPU. So I'm basically drawing all the same stuff, but I've reduced everything quite significantly. So that's the whole reason I'm switching to this. But it does mean it's a lot harder to do all this stuff. So like I said, I'm going to explain real quick how I'm batching all this stuff and sort of the main flow of the whole engine as it is right now. And then I'm going to talk about how I'm going to do the text and then try and implement that real quick. All right, so how in the world am I drawing all that stuff? Well, I'm using the GPU, like I said, in OpenGL, which means that it's a tremendously tremendously different process than it was using the CPU and Java Ops. So basically, in the GPU, you send in a list of vertices and you say, hey, draw a bunch of triangles. And then you basically draw all these triangles, which I actually have as this class called a quad. So I just have four vertices and stuff and it basically generates it. Um, my initial approach was gonna be, let's just draw a bunch of quads all over the screen, but in the GPU have these things called draw calls, which is literally just you saying something like GL draw elements, and every draw call you have takes up a certain amount of bandwidth, 
And the more draw calls you have, the worse it is. So there's a approach that you can use to get around this called batching, which basically means, hey, let's batch together a whole bunch of these quads into one big thing, and then we can draw it all with one draw call. So that was my next approach. And the way I'm going about this is basically game objects and UI elements are two separate things completely, and I have a batcher for each one. And so what happens is you have your window, and if you have a bunch of game objects inside this window, they all get drawn first. So I have a limit of about 100 for each of the game objects. So you can have 100 quads inside one one uh, batch for the game objects. And so it draws all of these in order of the Z index. So it would go negative one, zero, one, and each of these has its own batch. And it can have several batches too. So like if you have more than 100 game objects in your game world, it just generates a new batch and starts adding them all to the batch too. Then it draws the windows. So those UI elements you saw, it will draw those, and that's my just horrible drawings, but <laughs> it'll basically go ahead and after it finishes drawing all the game objects, it switches to the UI batcher and starts drawing all the UI, and it does the same thing. It goes according to Z-index and draws each one of those, and so this would be like one rectangle for that title bar. You would have one rectangle for the big background, and that's sort of the approach I'm taking now, which reduces it so that now you only have like, if you had three layers and for each of these, and they each had about 100 game objects, you would only have six draw calls as opposed to, if you tried to do all this with 100 game objects each, this would be 300 and 300, which would be 600 draw calls. So you're reducing that by 100 times just by batching them together like this, which is exactly what we want to do. We reduce the draw calls and we make it just really easy on the computer. Now, I'm really highly abstracting all of this, making it sound a lot simpler than it is. For each of these things, the reason I decided to separate this too is because for the UI, I'm using a different shader, which is something we will be learning about in this series when I start to go over how all this is done. And so we're using different shaders for the UI and the game objects. And the shader I developed for the UI is basically you can pass in a bunch of different attributes for a rectangle, and you can pass all these in, and then it draws it. And so the things you can pass in are like border widths, so you can pass in a border. And then you can also pass in rounding. So if you want the corners to be rounded, it'll round the corners. Then you can pass in the colors and all that different stuff, which basically gets stored inside a giant batch full of all the vertices. And then it sends it to the GPU and draws it in the order specified. This is why it's taking so much longer. So this has set me back about a week. Uh, I had the initial version that I showed you, which looked great, done in like a week. And then implementing all this stuff to get to the version I'm at now has taken another week just to get all this working again, except with the GPU instead. And so next thing I'm going to do is try and implement the text rendering, which I talked about. And basically, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of how I'm going to attempt to do this. So I looked into it a little bit, and basically they said, you want to generate a bitmap, which is just a big sprite sheet full of the letters. And so it just contains like every single character you could draw, and then you select uh, the portion of the bitmap that you want, and then to draw it onto the screen, what you would do is you would create a bunch of quads and this would then place the textures over it. And so then you would place the letters onto the screen. So basically the same concept as above where you have this whole batching thing going on and that's why it's really complicated. There is no easy way to do this. So it's going to take me probably the whole day and I'm going to try and get this done and see if it works. So I'm going to go try and implement that and then update you guys once I get sort of done with it. So I thought I'd fill you guys in on a quick update. This is two days since that last little bit that I recorded. I thought it would only take a day, but it's actually been way harder than that. And this is where I'm at right now. As you can see, it's rendering text, but it's upside down. So <laughs> I was about to fix that and that should be easy. It should be just simple. I'm messing up the texture coordinates and flipping them. So that's good, but I had some problems just trying to figure out how to do the text. Currently, what I have to do is I have to create this image, which is basically just an image with all the characters that you can draw. And then once I create this image, I have to sample from each part of the image and then blit it onto a rectangle. So just sort of splat it onto that rectangle. And that was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. So the first problem was I couldn't create this image right. And it took me forever to figure out how to finally get this image created because I was having trouble with STB, which is the package that comes with LWJGL. And then after I finally got that working, I was having problems because I was trying to calculate the line height. And for some reason, it was setting a zero. So I didn't see anything 
I was like, why isn't it drawing these? So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fix this up real quick and I'll be right back. That should take like five minutes, hopefully. All right, so it's been like five minutes and I flipped the text. As you can see, there's a little bit of artifacts from like the characters above it from when I'm sampling. So that's a capital B. If you look in here, there's a parenthesis that kind of extends below the basic line height. And it's kind of eating into that B's uh, space when I draw it on the screen. So that is something that I will work on fixing. And then, of course, just moving them up a little bit because they're like right on top of that. But that is the text working. I did remove some uh, different things because when I was trying to figure out what was going wrong, I could not... Uh, debug with so many different elements on the window so I removed all the blocks and stuff but those are added back in and this is how it will sort of look and with the text moved up a little bit more and then I need to start adding the grid back in and everything but this has been sort of my hardware acceleration improving that and everything. If you guys are looking to follow this series too um, I'm going to be doing a how-to series on how to build all this. I was planning on starting this today, but since this is taking a lot longer than I thought to get this all up and running, it's probably going to be pushed back to a week from today. But I'll keep you guys updated on my progress, and hopefully I'll have some physics and everything enabled pretty soon, because one, now that this is working good, it shouldn't be too hard to reintroduce the rest of the stuff. So I'll release a new uh, devlog pretty soon, and I hope you guys like this. If you did, Please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.